OnePassword just released an update that I have been waiting almost an entire year for. We finally have synced passkeys. And with this update, OnePassword may have just become the leader of all password managers because of the features that it provides. Synced passwords will allow you to log in easier, faster, and provide a more secure login experience than what you have today. How much easier? Well, using an Okta report, we can compare login times, the setup time, and even the error rate between just using a normal password and using a passkey. For all of these, we're looking at almost a 100% increase in speed and an eight times decrease in errors. For setup time, 19 seconds versus 34 seconds. For authentication time, three seconds versus 13 seconds. And for error rate, 0% versus 8.4%. Passkeys have the potential to completely change the way that you log into websites and make your life so much easier. In this video, I'll show you how to use this one new password feature so that you can get this set up in very little time. And stick around to the end because there are a few catches that you have to be aware of to make sure that you can use this to the full extent possible. Okay, before we get started, let's just do a quick precursor on passkeys. I do have a full video available, which I'll link in the description below, that you can get the full deep dive on. Passkeys are based on public key cryptography. This takes something that you have, which is a private key, and only you have, and creates a public key which you can provide to websites to allow this authentication back and forth. While historically this is used for encryption, you can use this to validate who you are as an individual because you have to use the private key, which is something only you have. The private key and the public key are mathematically connected so that they can validate that it is you who created that public key in the first place place. This is what allows you to securely log in without using a password. In fact, the websites may not even have to store a password because all they would have is your public key. And if an attacker were able to get access to that public key, they wouldn't be able to do anything with that maliciously. Okay, now that we know what pass keys are, let's dig into how to use them with 1Password. To test this out, I'm gonna go to a website called webauthn.io. This website has a bunch of information on pass keys, but most importantly is it has a really nice and easy way to test setting up pass keys. So that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna go in here first and just put in a test username and I'm gonna click on register. Now we can see right away, we have an option that pops up asking us if we wanna save the passkey in one password. And there's a few things we wanna look at. The first is the domain. This is going to tie it specifically to that web application. And the second is a username. This all is configured to make it very easy and secure for you to sign into these applications. From there, you're just gonna choose the vault you want it to go into and click save. And that's it. You can see it says passkey saved here. Now, in order to test, I'm just gonna click on authenticate here. And you can see it pops in asking me, do I want to sign in with a passkey? And I just click on sign in. And that's it, we're logged in. It really is that easy. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that some websites will still require you to sign in with a username and password, but then they might give you an option to sign up with passkeys after you have that all set up. This is just the nature of where we're at with passkeys and accounts in general, because a lot of sites still rely on username and password until you can get to the point of signing in with passkeys. But most importantly is you can configure a website specifically just to use passkeys and passkeys only, but that's a few years into the future. I mentioned before that there's some catches to using passkeys. Specifically, we have three that we're gonna cover today. The first catch is what websites actually support passkeys. It can be really difficult to understand what supports it and what doesn't, but thankfully one password has you covered here as well. There are two things that I'm gonna show you today. The first is a website called passkeys.directory. This is a website hosted by 1Password that actually just shows you all of the different websites that are supporting passkeys today. So we can see quite a few of them that are here, but obviously it's not a comprehensive list either. Interestingly enough, we have Home Depot as one of the options. Knowing that Home Depot supports passkeys, let's check the second way that you can figure out if a website supports passkeys or not. And this one is even easier than what I just showed you. So I'm gonna start with a new login here and I'm just gonna give it a test username and I'm just gonna give it a weak password of just test here. Just follow me along here. I'm then gonna go in and just put in homedepot.com and you can see that it's gonna pick it up by adding this icon here. This lets me know that it's recognizing the website. I'm gonna go ahead and click save and then 
automatically we are seeing a good feature of one password here. You can see it's telling me that there's a vulnerable password. This is part of the watchtower functionality in one password. And it's one of my favorite features that one password has because it allows you to look up and see automatically whether you're using a weak password, a compromised password, if you're not having MFA configured, and most recently, whether or not you don't have pass keys enabled if the website supports it. So to access that, we're just gonna go and click on Watchtower here, and we can see it's calculating out all my little stats here, and we see the vulnerable password, but most importantly, we have one pass key available here. This ties back to our Home Depot application. It takes me right there, and then that means I can just go to the website and configure pass keys with Home Depot. If you haven't used this feature yet and you're a one password customer, just stop what you're doing and go do that right now. Just do an audit on all of your passwords to see if you're using anything weak, if you're reusing passwords, and if there's anywhere that you're not using MFA or pass keys where it's supported, you can go and set that up now. The second catch is that you can't export pass keys from one password. Now this is a feature, not a bug. If we had the ability to export pass keys, it really kind of degrades the overall security of it. So we don't wanna be able to export these things out because you can go from bad to worst if somebody did get access to your 1Password vault, then they would have access to your pass keys, they can then export those, and then they can log in from really any device that they had. This brings us to the third catch. Sing's pass keys are less secure than something called device-bound pass keys, which are specifically tied to one device. So while this is super convenient because as long as I have one password installed on whatever device I'm trying to log into and then I can log into the application, it does mean that your one password account is the end all be all of the security. It's no different than using passwords because you're just using pass keys and it's another way to log into the website, but it's just one of those things to be mindful of. You really have to make sure that you're securing your one password account. And to do that, you wanna make sure you have two distinct things. One is a strong master password. Two is strong phishing resistant MFA. I recommend a YubiKey. Now, 1Password is already ahead of other password managers because they require a secret key to also log in. So this is something that you wanna make sure that you keep secure and aren't storing it on your computer. I always like to just print that off and keep it in a secure location. Even with all those catches, the functionality and convenience and increased security that pass keys provide is so worth trying to get this set up in as many applications as you can today. And we're still in the early innings of passkey supports with websites. So you wanna make sure that you monitor this routinely and update it whenever you possibly can. And just make sure again that you're keeping your 1Password vault safe and secure using the steps that I outline. If you wanna dig in deeper into passkeys or if you're just looking at how you can set up 1Password securely, take a look at these additional videos and be sure to subscribe to the channel because we're gonna to continue to drop tips and tricks on how you can keep your online identity and privacy safe.